Good morning, amazing man of God. Um, something the other day that LB said in a teaching really struck a struck a chord with me, and um, I've been thinking about it and praying about it a lot over the last uh, little bit, and uh, I think I came up with some new insights of my own and wanted to share a little bit with you. So uh, today, I'm going to start us out over in um, John 4, which is Something that I'm sure that you all have heard before, um, and this is uh, when Jesus meets the, the woman at the well. Now, I'm going to look at it from a little bit different perspective. And so what I want us to talk about today is uh, efficiency versus effectiveness. And uh, I'm going to start with this a little bit. And, um, so I, I want to start with, with scripture, and then I want us to kind of apply it to what we do here at Elevation. So um, <clears throat> it reads, Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact that was not Jesus who baptized but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now that seems like a really kind of a, a, a simple statement there, but this is the first instance where we really starts in, in this section where we really start seeing this idea of um, efficiency versus effectiveness. So uh, I want to show you a, a real quick map. So this is Jesus's route. Um, you know, he's starting out down here in the area of Judea and he's going up here closer to Nazareth. Um, and it seems like his journey through the area of the Samaritans would be the most efficient. Um, but for political and uh, topological reasons, uh, that wasn't always the case. In fact, in Jesus' day, Jews, Jews rarely traveled this straight path. They would come down here where the land was flatter. They could uh, make, make time a little bit easier. Um, and they could avoid the Samaritans, um, which they, they did not get along with. So, uh, as I thought about it this week, I came, came up with the idea that, you know, uh, when I was growing up, that there were areas in town where you just kind of avoided just because, uh, they didn't, you know, <laughs> I remember there was one area that, you know, I didn't want to get beaten up. So I, I went all the way around there. And for me, the going around was the most efficient. And I think for most Jews during this time, it was the, the most efficient route. It was, um, it may have taken longer, but they could move faster and they could avoid the entanglements of the Samaritans. But that's not what Jesus did. Jesus uh, chose to take the more rocky ground, the, the more difficult but straighter route through Samaria. And we see that it, it has some fantastic consequences. And so when he gets there, I'm going to pick up here in uh, John 4.4. 4. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the uh, plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan. I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it was to ask you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them, will never thirst. Indeed, the water I gave them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. 
The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and has now come, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and His worshipers must worship in Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When He comes, He will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Now, this may not seem like a good example of efficiency versus effectiveness, but um, when he first meets the woman at the well, uh, he speaks to her in metaphors, in parables, and doesn't directly come out and, and say what he eventually tells her in the end, which is that he is the Messiah. Um, and so we would think, you know, he, that doesn't seem very e efficient. Like, why didn't he just come out and tell her right, right from the get-go? Um, but he meets her where she is. And in that way, it may not have been as efficient, but it was much more effective in her life, and as we'll come to see in, in the lives of the people in the area as well. So he meets her where she's at and helps her to understand who he is in a way that makes sense to her. Now, if he comes in and he just immediately announces, like, hey, I'm the Messiah, give me a drink of water, she probably runs off screaming. Um, but then the way he approaches her and helps her to see who he is, that's much more effective for God. Um, he goes on and uh, after the, the disciples come back, we learn, it says, many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Now, even who he selected to, to bring knowledge of himself into the, the Samaritans wasn't particularly efficient, right? It, you know, we would think logically that you know, he should have uh, met with one of the town council leaders and they could have organized a town meeting, and then he could have spoke to them, and that would have been much more efficient than this poor woman at the well. But in fact, he chose the exact right woman to help because that was the most effective way for him to reach the townspeople. And it says in Scripture, uh, so when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days and because of his words, many more became believers. And that's, that's something just so vital to me is, you know, he never forgets the final goal. And that's the effectiveness of the message of God. And I think that that's, that's so key. And, you know, I think that it's so applicable to us on the parking team. Um, you know, as, as parkers and and as I think just as a group of men, we are extraordinarily efficient. Um, we do a lot of great things in that parking lot. Uh, you know, we can sit up and break down in 15 minutes flat. We know where every cone goes. We know where every sign goes. Even when we have a little wrinkle thrown at us like uh, this weekend, um, when we've got the, the fall festival and we know that we've got different things in different places, we're going to make it work and we're going to make it work efficiently and we're going to get people in and they're going to be parked and we'll get people out of the, uh, 
9.30 and time for the 11.30 to get in and be plenty of space, spaces and get people parked in there. And I think that that's great. And, I, and I'm definitely not knocking it. But I think sometimes you know, we sacrifice our effectiveness um, for efficiency. You know, we're really efficient. We get cars in. We identify VIPs, e-kids, get them where they need to go. But are we being as effective as we could be for the for the cause of Christ? Um, so one thing that I've really been thinking about is the importance of relationships. And you know, are we building relationships with people which will help foster their deeper relationship with Christ? And that's, you know, that's what Jesus did with the woman in the well. He fostered that relationship. And so here's my challenge to us. And, and trust me, I'm, I'm speaking to myself more than any one of you. Um, so here's, here's my challenge to myself and to everyone. I want you to learn one guest's name each week that, we, that you serve. One guest. And, and so let me tell you where this comes from is my uh, college coach, we always had the, the 1% rule. You got 1% better every day. And if you get 1% better every day, then by the end of the year, you're 365% better. One, we can all do 1%. In this challenge, you're going to learn about one person a day. Every Sunday when you come in, you're going to learn about one person. But I wanted to show you kind of the effectiveness that that can have. Now, that may mean that, you know, you, you stop people and talk talk to someone and it holds up traffic a little bit, that's fine. Uh, it might mean that while you're, you know, in the, the you know, de-greeting people and they're walking out that you take a little bit of extra time and you don't quite get out to your spot on time, that's fine, right? It's the relationships that build the church. Um, and so figure out, you know, who the person is, learn their first name, Learn what, kind of what they're driving so that the next time they come in, you can say hey to them. Um, and just start that relationship. Now, you know, it, for me, that's the hardest thing. It's the hardest thing. Even, even you know, I'm, I'm out front and you know, meet these VIPs. It's, it's hard for me to, to make that extra step just not to say like, oh, hey, see that guy in the orange over there? Go up there and he'll tell you where to park. Right, that's easy. That's efficient. But that's not effective. So what does it look like for me to be effective? That, that means that, you know, when we have a VIP or an e-kid, then come in and say, hey, my name's Andy. How are you doing today? Oh, your name's Kim. I'm, I'm so glad that you're here today, Kim. Uh, this is your first time. That's awesome. You've made a great decision and we're so glad to have you here. See that guy up in the orange? He's going to... Uh, show you exactly where to park. And next week, I'm going to be right here. And I want you to stop. Tell me how your week is next week. That's, that's more, that, that's what I want to see in myself and have the courage to do in myself. Um, and so here's kind of the math behind it too. Uh, there's on average, we have about four people on the parking team at, at any one time um, on a Sunday. If each of those four people reaches out and finds one person a week, that they can talk to and learn their name and keep up with them. You know, that doesn't mean like, you know, you after, you know, a two minute conversation, you're going to be best friends, but it means that you open the door for that relationship to grow. Okay. One person. All of us do that. We got four parkers on average a week, 52 weeks. That's 208 people we are connecting with in a year. Right. 208 people that we can invest in, that we can help in their walk with Christ. Now, are we going to be best friends with all those 208 people? Probably not. Hope so. Probably not, though. But we are being and demonstrating Christ to those people and helping grow those relationships and helping them just make their steps towards a deeper relationship with Christ easier. And to me, that's a lot more effective um, than, than maybe what I've, I've done personally in the, in the past. Um, so, yeah, 
we want to still be efficient. We still want to get people in. We still want to get people parked and make sure that they're on time for the message. And, you know, Pastor Stephen brings it every week. But let's not sacrifice our effectiveness in the name of efficiency. Remember, the goal is to help people develop their relationship in Christ. So, uh, and so that's, that's what I want us to challenge uh, us to um, for the, the rest of this year and, and, and moving forward. Let's be uh, effective partners for Christ. Let me pray for us real quick. And then I just hope everybody has a great day. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for just giving me the opportunity to uh, speak your word to this amazing group of men. Thank you for uh, all that they bring to elevation and not just elevation, but to this world. Lord, they really are your light. And in every aspect of their life, they're touching lives and they are showing people what it means to be a true follower of Christ. Lord, thank you for this day. And just uh, thanks for the blessing to just be part of this group. In your name I pray, amen. And you all have a great day.